Aloha, good morning, welcome to Kahu's Corner, this early Monday morning, beginning of the work week. Thank you for joining me again this morning. Um, hope you had a blessed weekend, whatever it was uh, that you had planned out. Hope it went well. I hope you did. You were safe this weekend and you were blessed this weekend. Uh, if you was at the ballpark uh, in Waimea yesterday, <clears throat> we had our um, morning service there at the ballpark. Uh, it was an awesome time. Um, we had the body of Christ, the church itself, moved down there to the ballpark for the day. We got set up. We had our morning message down there. We had our devotion, time of prayer, our praise and worship, um, the congregation, guests. And then we had one friendly uh, competition of uh, softball. It was a beautiful day. We had lunch down there. Uh, if you was down there, then you was blessed. It was an awesome time. And, you know, the congregation excited to have another outing like that. And it was this, a perfect, perfect example of recognizing that the church is the people in the building and not the building itself. Um, yes, God has blessed us with a beautiful um, place at Imiola, <clears throat> you know, core history. Um, it is a be beautiful, beautiful building, a campus. But the life of a church is the people itself. And we went down to the park and just have fun. So if you was there, it was an awesome time. And if you wasn't, stay tuned because I'm sure uh, uh, we'll plan one soon whenever Kahu wants to get out and um, and make another event. Or well, together as a, as a body, we'll decide that. But anyway, um, one quick announcement this morning this coming wednesday two days from now we're going to jump in to bible study again if you haven't heard it like we did a few months ago uh, we had it at uh, the homes home bible study uh, which is good a chance to just break down the congregation into even smaller groups and um and pray about a book uh in the bible and just go through it take about maybe 10 to 12 weeks However, God leads the, the leaders of the Bible study or just the Bible group itself on, on the Word. Um, it, I, I held my first, um, Linda and myself held uh, our first Bible study on the book of Colossians out of the New Testament. Um, the first go-around at our place, uh, we had like 13 people. Um, it was blessed to see... Um, God's spirit move. You know, everybody has something to bring to the table. When you read God's word, um, just have a few questions to ask ourselves. And throughout the week, people can just go through each chapter and see what the spirit reveals to them. And then we come back the next Wednesday. Uh, and then we pray. And then we, we fellowship too. We even, we even eat together. Um, so it's... Most important is studying God's word, but also fellowshipping like we did yesterday. Bringing food, breaking bread, talking story, checking up on each other, praying together. And it all starts by knowing God. And if you don't know God and you want to come, you're more than welcome. That's the whole idea about this um, homeschool Bible study. So uh, this second go around, uh, Linda and I are going to um, be in the Old Testament. We're going to go through the book of Ecclesiastes um, about really the life of Solomon. Almost his autobiography or his memoir of how he lived life as uh, God made him king over all Israel. And um, what he had wished, God gave him a wish and he asked for the right things, for wisdom. But even in all the wisdom God had granted him, God gave him riches beyond. It was uncountable. But even with all of the wisdom that he had, he still was prone to, to sin, to living a life away from God. So we're going to look at that and use it as an application to our lives and, and how we can get things in order. 
I mean, really the question you got to ask of us is what is the purpose of life? What is our purpose here on earth? What is it? I mean, everybody has a different answer. Uh, no one answer is the same, but as you go through life, is it um, what you know? Is it how good you are at whatever it is? Is it accumulating stuff, you know, stuff that you can't take with you when you leave this life? Um, God's Word says the same way we came into this life is the same way we're going to leave with our fist closed. Uh, we take nothing. So... In this book, we will read all about that, about practical wisdom, about, more importantly, spiritual wisdom. Because at the end of the Ecclesiastes in chapter 12, Solomon, make Solomon the wisest man, um, is going to make a conclusion. Uh, and it's, I'm excited about it. I've went through the book once or twice, but every time you re-read God's Word and go back and read it over there's more to unpeel, more to unravel, more to learn. So I'm excited. Uh, but anyway, my house, uh, Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Um, Kahu Keith and Elder Jared, again, did walking through uh, the book of Romans. Powerful, powerful book about our uh, justification in Christ and how we... To me, it goes hand in hand with this. What does God expect of us? So, really, you're going to be blessed either way. Uh, Elder Jared is all the way in Kona, Palisades, and then Kahuki lives like a couple miles inside of Lakeland on the old Mamalahoa Highway. But if you still have questions about where everybody is at, um, drop a message here on Kahuki's Corner. Um, and I'd be willing to give you instructions, directions to the house, and Kahu Kid is on Wednesdays. Um, again, this is another form of communication, Kahu's Corner. Um, so if you're willing to participate, please, there's room down here. We'll be more than blessed to have you guys down here, and, and we can be blessed together walking through this book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, I'm excited. Um, and like I said, Solomon was inspired by the Holy Spirit, so it's for us to learn. He wrote this for us, for the generations after him, so that we can learn from his mistakes. And hopefully, you know, if we're doing that ourselves, we can make the correction um, and know what um, the purpose of life is truly uh, about. It's who we know, not what we know or how good we're at it. Um, but anyway, my verse for today. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Solomon starts it with, uh, Everything is meaningless. meaningless. Uh, yes, says the teacher, completely meaningless. Um, God put us here for a reason. He's the creator of life. So God has plans for us to, to live our life. If we're outside of it, we're doing things not lining up with God, um, it becomes meaningless. Uh, you hear story after story of people who accumulate so much stuff that their life is still, at the end of it, meaningless. Uh, there's no purpose behind it. You can make all the money you want, or, but sure, yeah, if God can be the center of your life. You have an awesome relationship with Jesus Christ. He's your Savior. You know that you're going into heaven based on your faith in Christ and you know who he is and God blesses you with things oh by all means enjoy that um, enjoy what God has blessed you with but if you go through this world not knowing God or not knowing Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and you accumulate things and you accumulate things in Ecclesiastes uh, the teacher is going to say it's all vanity or meaningless there's no purpose behind it. Um, so we're excited about that. One quick example I want to show you. Just flip over to the New Testament. In the book of Philippians. Um, the Apostle Paul. If you know his life and you read his life in Acts chapter 8, chapter 9. Throughout the book of the later part of Acts. Um, you can see that conversion. 
and how he looked back on his former life before he knew Christ, he counted it as rubbish. It, it didn't have no purpose behind it. And we're going to read one small um, couple verses of him writing the letter to the believers uh, in Philippi, the Philippians. And this is what he said in chapter 3, uh, starting in verse 6. He's, this is Paul. He's already saved in Christ. He's doing the work of of Christ. Christ is in him now, but he's reflecting back to his previous life. And this is what he says. He says, chapter 3, verse 6 in the book of Philippians. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church, and as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. So two things he was passionate about. The persecution of believers and obeying the law without fault. He knew it in and out, forward to back, the law. Yes, God's teachings and instructions, right? So in verse 7, he says, I once thought these things were valuable. So he once thought it was valuable. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law, rather I become righteous through faith in Christ. See that? Now that Paul looked back, he didn't count his purpose of life of what he knew or what he did. He thought that was good in his previous, before he met Christ, persecuting Christians. Okay, he thought that was righteous. And then he knew the law front to back. He thought that was righteous. But after he had that, so to say, come to Jesus moment with Christ himself on the road to Damascus, his whole outlook in life changed. Everything he knew previous, he counted it as garbage. And what he lived for now was who he knew, Christ. And, um, and that's all he lived. His faith in Christ was how he lived his life. And whatever blessings we accumulate along the way, knowing Christ and having him in, his, in our life as Lord and Savior... We count it as blessings, and then we give him the praise for it. We don't do it based on our own. He gives us the will and the power to do it. But when we don't recognize God as the creator of life, uh, where our blessings come for, if we don't live for him, then like the teacher said, it's all meaningless. So, I'm excited. I can't wait to get dive into this book. And I'm just here from others, how the Spirit is um, moving in them and can bring everything to the table, be blessed, and keep God's Word in the center. And you guys have a safe week. Days are flying by. Before you know it, we'll be cooking a turkey. Um, we'll be, it'll be the holiday season. Now we, We're right at the doorstep of it, so be, stay, be safe on the roads. Be safe at work. Be blessed. Aloha.